So before we get started, I wanted to address this comment right here by lovely Lillian. She said that seeing those 16 unread combos, which were over here, they, they want to make her die. Lovely Lillian, I'm very sorry that it made you feel that way, and so I have erased them. Hopefully, you're feeling a little bit better. Hi, welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace, and today we are going to be giving like kind of a progress update. I guess I saw like the 7 million and I was like, wow, that's actually a lot of downloads, and then realized it's been about two weeks since I've started this game. So for you guys who don't know, oh my god, where is this thing? The 7 million downloads. Here we go. So for you guys who weren't aware, we got 7 million downloads, and for that, we got 1k Lumamba, which is freaking awesome. 1k Lumamba, that's about three rolls. You know, it's nice. It's cool. It's very nice. There's not much to say about it, but I guess seeing this, like 7 million, as well as the fact that it's been about two weeks, I kind of wanted to make like a progress update, like where I've gone up to, like after these 14 days. On top of that, I wanted to give like a mini review after all of this time. I think 14 days is a very generous amount of time to put into a gadget, especially one that I'm going really hard in. And so I would like to think that my opinion is a little bit valid, you know? Okay, with that being said, congrats on 7 million alchemy stars and let's jump into the video. So first I'm going to talk about my progress update and then we'll get into the review, but let's have a look at my Aurorians first. So over here, you can see that I have a whole bunch of six stars, right? <laughs> oh, this is so painful. So what I originally did was I re-rolled actually for three six stars, which turned out to be Icy, Michael, and Carleen. After that, I rolled on the beginner banner guaranteed six star and then I got Gronru. And so what that means is that after the first day, the only six stars I've gotten are Caron, Uriel, and Sharona. Now this is really freaking painful because I've actually spent all of the rolls on my account. There are very, very few star flares left that I can actually get. And so what that really means is that, yeah, I had to pity for every single one of them. I pitied for Caron, I pitied for Uriel, and I pitied for Sharona. For Sharona, it went up to like 27%. For Uriel, it went up to like 20%. And for Caron, I think it was like 27%. But essentially, it was a lot of pain, okay? So like, I really envy you guys who are pulling like two six stars from like a single temple. Honestly, I even envy you guys who get a six star in like 20 pulls. Because after the initial ones that I spent 17 hours on, it's actually taken me like 60 pulls for each one of them. All right, with that being said, let's have a look at my five stars. And so as you can see, I've gotten Barton, Faust, Sicaro. I've actually got quite a good opinion on a whole bunch of these five stars. And so I think my next video is going to be like who I think are the best five stars. There are some that are kind of lackluster, some that are kind of better than the others. And so I do want to talk about that. However, let's save that for another video. But these are the five stars that I've actually got. And then I've got the four stars over here. And that's kind of it. Three stars down here. And I've kind of, I think I have like every freaking character except for like the five and six stars. All right. So that rounds out my characters. So let me just quickly show you guys my teams, like the, what they kind of look like. So typically for my water, I use this, except instead of Michael, there is the opportunity to put in Vice. However, recently I did pull a Sharona. So Sharona could be that fifth slot instead. As you can see, I'm missing actually quite a fair bit of conversion and like it's really really painful to be honest. As for my Thunder team, I've not played it too much as you can see. I've managed to get up to like maybe like 20 Inspire for Thunder and honestly I have a decent Thunder team however I'm missing a couple of key units again more conversion and so honestly it really makes me not want to play Thunder. Now let's move on to my Fire team which is actually my strongest and it's really funny because like after like day three or day four I actually pivoted from water to fire and the reason I pivoted is because I ended up getting Karon, Uriel, AC and Isvan. Faust actually came later, but I did have Barbara and Alice, so it was a really good fire team, to be honest. However, how I feel about the fire team is that there are not really any teleports, so like from a mobility point of view, it kind of hurts. However, with that being said though, with Caron, Uriel, AC, and Faust, I do feel like I am able to get around the field because there's so much conversion. Honestly, guys, like after playing this team, it's really hard to play the others because like conversion is seriously king, especially when you do not have teleports. It just really sucks. As well as that, AC, after her buff, she just feels so freaking good to use. She actually heals quite a fair bit and the fact that she's getting her skill like two turns instead of three turns, she just feels like a six star converter now. Moving on, let's have a look at my forest team and as you can see, it is a little bit pitiful. So I just put together this team pretty fast and as you can see, I do not have a six star. Honestly, like forest has been really, really weird for me because there's a lot of like weird patterns that they use on their chain combos. I'm not a massive fan of forest. However, I do believe that if I had some of the other units, I'd probably enjoy it a bit more. All in all, forest is okay, but like as you can see, I am really lacking in converters. And so I don't know how I actually progress with this team. And so with that in mind, I wanted to hop over to Spire. But before that, let's go to 814 because like I just wanted to show you guys I finished the game. That's that's really kind of it. So if you guys have been following me for a while, you see this one star on the 814 and that's because I cheesed the heck out of it. Again, I borrowed an A3 Sharona and I ran my water team into it. And then like I eventually was able to RNG myself into beating this boss. Yes, I did use that water team. And as you could see, the majority were actually at A140. So it's definitely doable. How 
However, again, massive props to my Poro friend who gave me that A3 Sharona. All right, so after that, I wanted to show you guys Spire because Spire is probably where we can talk about progress the most. And so as you can see, I've actually made it to 43 on the Molten Spire, which is relatively good. However, I am so hard stuck on Molten Spire, like I don't even know what to do. I think the only thing that I realistically can do is like upgrade all of my fire units to A3 and hopefully brute force it with power. At this point, especially for Molten Spire, it just really feels like a power check. I'm just not able to survive and I'm not able to do enough damage. So I think it's just upgrades from here. As for the other ones, the Emerald Spire, I'm going to stop there because I just went for the 15th floor for that like achievement thing. And then Thunderbolt, Frost, maybe I'll work on Frost after get my Sharona up, but like this is kind of where I'm at now. To be honest, I'm really comfy here, especially because Spire does not reset. And so like, I think I might leave it here. All right, let's go to the next thing, which is going to be the Colossus. As you guys know it, this is probably the biggest thing for me because Colossus, max it out. Ooh, look at that. Grunru is doing the thing. She's doing... The Wait a second. That's not Grunru. Oh, it's Louise. What the... Dude, this is actually so lit. I love... This is... Oh, man. This attention to detail is just what I love about this game. It's stuff like this that really just adds characterization to each of the characters, right? And then, like, probably if I go over to the bar... Yep, okay. So there's still nobody at the bar. I guess I just haven't recruited any bartenders yet. But yeah, it's, like, so freaking cool seeing stuff like this. All right, so Colossus update. I have maxed out my entire Colossus, as you can can see and so it's given me all of the good dank resources. I actually maxed it out a couple of days ago and honestly it wasn't painful at all. Towards the end I was dumping actually quite a fair few Colossus materials to get a lot of drones so if you guys remember it's this guy over here and I just got a bunch of these guys. However after maxing out the Colossus you may ask well what do I do with excess fireflies or drones? And to that I answer you actually click this button over here and you can get more atomic reagents by converting fireflies. Honestly this is pretty good because I've actually been using this conversion thing and like it actually uses quite a lot of this like green material, the reagents. Now that I'm actually going for A3, I found myself using the workshop quite a fair bit. So like, honestly, like bless the workshop. I'm so happy that this thing exists. But yeah, aside from that, you guys can already see like it's fully maxed out 14 days. It is not too long at all. Again, the event is coming in about six to seven days. So if you guys haven't gotten there, at least try to get like the prison pillar and the dispatch up as well as the resource stage. Everything else is kind of like, okay. As for secret territory and the exploration room, honestly, I cannot see a difference. It looks exactly the same to me. Me. But I digress. Let's move on from this one. I guess the last thing that I can possibly show you guys is how I'm going with like the old seal. And I've just finished the first one and I'm on the second stage. Some people actually recommend doing like the daily pull for the 180 like daily quests. To be honest, I don't even know if I can pull together the pulls, right? Because I am so star for starless. And so honestly, in the long run, it's probably only going to cost me like maybe one or two days. And I'm okay with that. So I guess you might be wondering why I picked Regal. And it was just that at the time, I was really trying to get my water team up up to like be able to clear all of the content. However, now that I've actually cleared all of the content and my water team is actually looking okay, like it, it's a sunk cost now. I don't really want to reset and I'm just going to keep going with Regal. So yeah, to be honest, in regards to this, you can't really make a mistake. By the time you finish any of these guys, it's going to be like way too late. I think it's estimated to take about like two and a half to three months to actually unlock each of these guys. And so in total, it's going to take you about eight months and that's quite a significant amount of time. You're going to have way better teams built. So these guys, you can kind of think of like as a bonus. Okay, so that being said, I think that's kind of it. So let me kind of talk about the review, my thoughts around this game and look at Uriel. Uriel's so cute. All right, guys. So I guess let's start off with like a numerical score and I would give this game like an eight and a half out of 10. I think there are just so many things that this game just does right because like, especially like the base, Colossus is one of the biggest things, right? It's quite clear that the base management is, let's say, inspired from Arknights. However, as you saw before, there was those little bits of attention to detail. Like, oh my God, like look at all these characters just wandering around here. This base just actually feels a lot more alive than a lot of other games, especially Arknights. Arknights just really feels like a massive factory to me, to be honest. However, the quality of life stuff has been really, really good. Like, for example, they don't actually need to consume stamina to be working at the prison pillar, for example. The fact that you don't have to consume any stamina and you don't have to rotate out like units and stuff is just so awesome. They don't need to consume stamina. They're just chilling there. They're just working. They're probably having beverages as well, okay? Alchemy Stars treats their people well. Arknights probably slave drives their people. Okay. On top of that, having a prison pillar is actually incredible. And at level five, I think it doubles your daily stamina. Honestly, I am very, very happy with the amount of stamina that I get from the natural regeneration and the prison pillar. Everything else is just really nice. The fact that the dispatch actually gives you like some of the gemmy currency, that's so awesome. All right, moving on to the gameplay itself. I, I love the gameplay.
gameplay. Like you guys already know it. From CBT, from the moment I laid my eyes on the gameplay, it has been incredible. Yes, there is an element of RNG. That some people are gonna like it. Some people are gonna hate it. I think it's okay. I personally don't actually like it or hate it, but I think it's it's fine. It's bearable. And that is probably why I like converters so much because like it actually takes away a lot of that RNG element. Speaking of giving us gemmies, I want to talk about the secret territory, and I think this is a really really awesome mode. The fact that it resets and you actually get rewards like every single week. You can buy like some of those gift rewards or you can buy some of those like star flares as well as like furniture and more. Like I really, really appreciate this whole game mode. On top of that, the fact that it's roguelike, like I really appreciate that because it means that you can actually clear it from when you just unlocked it. And at that point, it's just kind of like a matter of skill because like all of the stats are matched. So for the game mode, secret territory and the rewards associated with it, I would give it a 10 out of 10. I really like this. I think this is something that's really well done. The next thing I wanted to talk about is kind of like the characters themselves. So let's start with the art. Like this is incredible. Honestly, the fact that they've actually managed to live 2D, I think like every single character is just so freaking awesome. But funnily enough, like although I love the live 2D, that's actually not what I like the most about all of these characters. What I really like is the fact that there is so much characterization, right? So they have these files, but not only that, they actually have that text messaging system at the outside. So if I come back over here, you guys already know this one and it's just so funny. Like I never knew that this would actually give me some semblance of characterization. I think from like a world building point of view, this is probably one of the greatest features in the game. Guys, I kind of get like, it's oh, it's kind of redundant and stuff, but really like this gives me insight into like how each of the characters are. However, on top of that, it actually kind of characterizes like your main protagonist, your navigator. I just think this is so cool because it gives like these characters like personality. I'm going to be honest, guys, a lot of times, like I don't actually feel myself like caring about the characters. However, with all of these systems and all of these like interactions, it makes me actually really want to know more. One of the only other games that actually have made me feel this way is like Genshin Impact because they put a lot into like each of their characters. This system was really, really simple, but really, really effective. Another 10 out of 10. It's so great. Now let's talk about kind of like the cash shop and stuff and how I feel about all of this. So the monthly pass is probably the first thing to talk about. And I kind of like this because in total you get about like 10 plus two. So about 12 pulls. And for me, it's like going to be $7. $7, it's kind of okay. However, I do definitely appreciate and understand that it's not really like the cheapest thing for a lot of you guys. I just think like compared to the industry, this is quite a decent price. Some of the other gachas have them for like $8, $9 or $12. Like Precon is freaking, wait, no, it's $13. Precon is $13 for a monthly. That monthly is actually so freaking expensive. On the other hand, like these guys, I guess they seem reasonable, I, but I don't really touch those packs. So it's not really for me to review. I guess the last one is this one over here, which I might consider picking up, but like, to be honest, I don't really want to. I'm just not really a guy that usually buys like rolls outright like this. This is like 10 pulls and I just feel like a $1.50 a pull for like freaking three stars is not really worth it. I, I don't really like that. However, from my perspective, this is just like kind of a personal opinion, but if I was to actually compare this one to like some of the other industry prices, I think this one is okay. The last thing that I kind of want to talk about on a positive note is like the amount of like support that they're giving us. The fact that they actually care about these milestones, you know, like the five mil, the seven mil, actually this is the wrong one, but they're actually kind of like interacting with us, giving us some of this like nice stuff, even sending out a questionnaire, which is really, really good because it kind of like symbolizes them caring about us, actually caring about our opinions, which I do appreciate. I hope they actually take some of our like perspectives into account. But yeah, I guess in a nutshell, I do feel like the devs care about us and I really like that. All right, so what exactly don't I really like about the game at this point? The first thing is that the income feels really, really flimsy. For you guys who did come from Ark Knights, like I would say that Ark Knights is very much on the stingy side. Yes, it's actually got like some pretty cool pity systems, which like Alchemy Stars actually has as well. So I'm very, very grateful for that. Those are definitely pros. However, after like earning all of these star flares and all these loom ambers, it just feels really, really dry. And I'm not really a big fan of that. Like, so some other gadgets, for example, Dragalia Lost, like the CEO would wake up and be like, let's just give everyone a temple. And honestly, there are a lot of other gadgets like that as well. And I don't want to seem like ungrateful, but yeah, I guess because I'm feeling really, really dry, like, and there's no like constant income coming in, it just really makes me not want to spend, right? So for you guys who don't watch Precon, like for me, Precon, like I already said, I spend $13 a month on the monthly. However, spending that money kind of feels okay to me because like they are giving me a lot of constant income. Yeah, I do have to work hard for it, but like at least the opportunity is there. In this game, there's not really any opportunity aside from secret territory right now. However, with that being said though, we might be able to get a lot of income or like other good things from the events. And so I'm definitely going to hold my reservations for this one. So 
if I was to give a summary, they're really generous in kind of like the one-offs, like hitting milestones and all of that. However, there's not really any systems to support kind of like an ongoing income. So the next thing I want to talk about is the battle stages themselves. So as you guys know, there is quite a lot of RNG in it. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, actually, like if anyone hasn't noticed this, it'd be kind of strange. But like the AI really, really, really sucks. Like if I was actually to hop into one of these stages or even use the auto battle, like it's just a real pain. Like it's completely obvious that the AI is just not making the most optimal moves. I don't even have to show you guys. I think you guys already know about this. And so I guess seeing this auto battle button kind of makes me feel like it's bringing out another con. And it's just that I wish that there were skip tickets. Yeah, I do know that there are carriers and honestly, I've been using them as much as I can. And honestly, they are such a lifesaver. But really, and I guess this is a really personal preference because I know a lot of you are really into like, oh man, if you're gonna play the game, actually play the game. But I actually like just playing like the new stuff and I'm not really a fan of like the repetitive grinding. Like if I was to unlock a new stage, yeah, I completely get it. I need to beat it first, right? However, like having to feel like I need to beat it over and over again, I don't know how many times I have run this freaking Nitium stage. It's kind of getting old. Like you guys know what I mean? But yeah, I guess there is that one. In regards to Spire, this one just doesn't really feel good because like I can definitely tell that if you're missing like some key characters, it'd be really, really hard to actually clear this guy. For example, for my Emerald Spire, I'm really, really feeling the pain of not having like enough converters. Only having Sakara and Pactru, I would gladly let like step on me. It just really isn't enough to like make the game go smoothly. It's almost like some characters are compulsory to clear some stages. And this is where it's really different from Arknights because in Arknights, like you can definitely use like low rarity units to clear like anything actually. And to be honest, I'm thinking that this is going to be one of the biggest things leading to people quitting. People just realizing like, even if you go like 8370 on your packed, like if you don't have the freaking mid guard, it's just not going to work. Hopefully over time, they're going to add more like five or six star acquisition methods, like the recruitment system from Arknights. And honestly, I think that would make everything a lot, lot better. The last thing that I do want to talk about is kind of like the performance overall. I don't know about you guys, but my game has been crashing like crazy. So apparently Bluestacks is kind of like the worst emulator to actually play this on. And so if anyone from Bluestacks is watching, like, please take note. I don't know why, but apparently LD Player, apparently Moomoo, apparently Nox, all of them perform better for AS than Bluestacks. With that being said, though, I am still playing on Bluestacks right now just because I'm a little bit too lazy. But I definitely am considering switching over to LD Player, especially with the amount of, like, freezes I've been getting. Also, the fact that it's just, like, locked to 30 FPS, it just really isn't it. Like, everything just, like, feels so sluggish, you know what I mean? Like, scrolling through menus, it kind of feels like a 1990s game still. And to be honest, this kind of persists even on the mobile version. And before we get there, I really want to praise the mobile version because the mobile version actually plays really, really freaking well. However, this still feels like it was released in the era of, like, Puzzles and Dragons, you know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, I guess that's kind of, like, my final critique. I really, really hope that they're gonna, like, unlock the frames to have a go, like, 60 FPS, like, kind of, like, brrr. Otherwise, at this point in time, 14 days later, I am still so ready to keep playing this game. Event is coming out in six days. We've got new characters coming. We've got skins coming out. Honestly, I am so excited. And this game, I would still rate an 8.5 out of 10. So yeah, I guess that summarizes all of like my progress as well as like my thoughts behind this game. I'm really liking it and I hope you guys are as well. So I guess guys, that brings us to the end of the video. And so let's wrap this up. I've got a secret question for you guys. And that is, are you guys enjoying the game as much as I am? Let me know how long you guys have been playing like whether it be like 10, 6 or 14 days and let me know if you guys are still having fun with it. If you guys do want to tell me, drop that bad boy down in the comments below and I would really appreciate it because it lets me know that you've actually made it to the end of the video which means you've watched the entire friggin' thing. Either that or you skipped to the end which is kind of weird. But otherwise, if this video was kind of entertaining or like you guys kind of found it helpful then please consider a sub, a comment, a follow, a pin, a follow. If you guys are looking for more people to chat with, come join the Discord and if you'd like to support the channel there are some affiliate links down in the comments comments below. We also have a membership thing which gets you a cool little badge. But seriously, please do not feel pressured to do these things. Watching till the end is already support enough. But as some wise man once said, all good things must come to an end. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video.